Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here. And in today's SolidWorks Sheet Metal Quick Tip, we're gonna talk about creating and using a forming tool on a sheet metal part. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a forming tool like this forming tool here, where we're able to push the forming tool into the sheet metal part deforming the metal in these regions here, making the metal much thinner in these regions here, at least in theory. And we're gonna show how to add that forming tool to the design library so you can drag and drop it and add it to your parts. So if that all sounds good to you, be sure to hit the like button on this video and let's get into it. Now, one thing to note about forming tool features is that generally speaking in 3D CAD, these features do not show in the flat pattern or at least do not show in their deformed state. You can see here that when we're creating a form tool feature in SolidWorks. It just remains in its forming tool state in the flat pattern. And that means that there are some special considerations that need to take place when you're creating a drawing of this part. But we're not going to talk about drawings today. We're just going to focus on the 3D model. And whenever I create one of these videos, I always think it's good when my students or the people that are watching the video can follow along with. So if you want to follow along with here, what you can do is you can start out by creating a new part in millimeters, going to the front plane and beginning a sketch and and then creating a rectangle with the dimensions 50 by 150. Then what you can do is you can hit escape and take this line here and make it midpoint to the origin. And then finally, you can take this lower line here and you can say that you want that line to be for construction. So if you're trying to follow along with and you wanna make one of these forming tools and actually use it before the end of the video, this is what your first sketch should look like. And if you're just getting into the world of sheet metal, I wanna remind everybody that we are teaching a sheet metal training class. Actually next week, we're gonna be teaching that sheet metal training class. It's over a web meeting with me. And so you're able to ask me questions throughout that training class. You get a training manual and you get to learn all the fundamentals of SolidWorks sheet metal. So if that's something that sounds interesting to you, you can take a look down below in the description. I've got a link to that training class and all the information regarding the scheduling and how to take that class. So hopefully that gave you enough time to get this first sketch in place. And now we're gonna go to our sheet metal tab and we're gonna choose base flange slash tab. And once we choose base flange tab, we can see that we can bring this out to a depth of 200 millimeters. And if you look down below here, below where the depth of that base flange tab is, we've got our wall thickness and our inside bend radius. We're gonna make the wall thickness three. We're gonna make the inside bend radius five. Three millimeters wall thickness, five millimeters inside bend radius. We hit the green check mark and there we go. That is gonna become our landing part for this sheet metal forming tool. Now to create the sheet metal forming tool, we're gonna start by creating a new part. And for this part, it doesn't matter what material you're using, but you do wanna use millimeters just so that you can follow along with what I'm doing. So I'm gonna make a new part here. I'll just make mine out of ABS. It doesn't matter what the material is. Just make sure you're in millimeters. And then we're gonna go top plane, begin a sketch, orient the view, and we're gonna create a rectangle here with a height of 75 and a width of 50. So there's what your sketch should look like. 7550 and then we're going to do a regular solid extrude features extrude and we're going to bring this down to a depth of it doesn't matter it doesn't really matter what the depth is you can make it 10 millimeters 20 millimeters 50 millimeters you can make it anything you want i'm just going to make mine 20 millimeters but it's purely arbitrary so whatever depth you want just make a block there that's extruded and have that extrude down from the origin now we're going to rename that we'll call that something like dummy block because the geometry from this block really isn't used or at least it isn't used much in the forming tool feature you'll see what i mean by that in just a minute now here on this top face we're going to begin a sketch orient our view and we're going to press the s key to begin a circle and we'll make a circle here with a diameter of 30 millimeters and then we're going to press the s key create a slot and we'll make a slot here that comes down and over like so. And then let's add some dimensions to this. We'll make the width of this slot 20 millimeters. And then we will make the, the center to center distance on this slot 20 millimeters. So now we've got our slot here. We've got our circle here. This is what your next sketch should look like. Something like this. And once you've got that sketch in place, what you can do is you can choose features extrude so once again we're using a solid feature here not a sheet metal feature but a solid feature and so down in this box where it says selected contours we're going to choose these three regions here one two three regions so you just pick here one two three regions just picking inside of that uh, sketch boundary and then we're going to say that's going to come up to a height of eight millimeters 
and we're going to say that that's going to have draft and the draft we're going to put on this thing is going to be 12 degrees 12 degrees of draft so when you go to create this extrusion you're going to say draft and the draft is going to be 12 degrees of draft and so then we hit the green check mark and that is the beginning of our forming tool what we're going to do with this forming tool is if you if you imagine this line here at the top of the screen between the the toolbars and the actual graphics area imagine that is our sheet metal that's the wall thickness of our sheet metal there what we're going to do with this forming tool is we're going to take the forming tool and we're going to push that up until it goes into the wall thickness of our sheet metal and then starts pushing through and then it's going to stop here at this face of our of our uh, dummy block so we have the sheet metal forming tool we push that up we hit the sheet metal face we push it up through and so what we're going to end up with is a sheet metal uh, shape that originally the wall thickness looked like this now it's going to be pushed up and over and down like this it's going to be pushed up and over and down like this so anything we do on the outside of our sheet metal forming tool is going to become geometry that exists on the inside of our actual sheet metal part so you want to keep that in mind when you're defining your radii for this new part so for example this radius here you know we just kind of want that to be something large so we'll say fill it and we'll say we want this fillet here to be let's say 15 millimeters so 15 millimeters there for that fillet just something that's a little bit on the large side to make that transition look nice and smooth so we hit the green check mark but then this fillet down here should be eight millimeters and the reason we know that that should be eight millimeters is because our wall thickness for our sheet metal part our wall thickness is three millimeters and our inside bend radius is five millimeters so this radius here is five millimeters so therefore this radius here should be eight millimeters eight millimeters so when you're making your your forming tools you want to keep in mind what's what's the radius of the sheet metal what's the wall thickness of the sheet metal and you should be kind of close to what that math would work out to be it doesn't always have to exactly match our rules for sheet metal because we're already dealing with a lot of material deformation and thinning but it should be pretty close and if you're if you're not sure then just use the wall thickness plus the inside bend radius so the inside bend radius is five so therefore this radius on our forming tool should be eight millimeters so we go to the fillet command we choose eight millimeters and we choose this lower edge and look at that that looks pretty good and then we go to our fillet command again and then we're going to make this radius here five millimeters and we'll put this five millimeter radius here that's our inside bend radius for the sheet metal so five millimeters running around the top so then we hit the green check mark again and oh yeah this part's looking pretty good and so now what we could do is we can choose to remove some geometry from this face now what does that mean exactly remove the geometry from this face well when we add the forming tool we want to notch out a hole here for our keyway we want to kind of notch out a hole here so that we've got you know a place where this thing can actually hang on the wall the idea here is that we would we would put a screw through here the screw would go into the wall and then this thing would be able just to kind of like set upon those screws so it's going to end up coming down there so the way that we tell solidworks to remove that face is we create what's called a split line so we pick this face here begin a sketch orient our view s key circle create a circle here let's make this circle 11 millimeters and then s key slot and we'll make a slot here that comes down like this and comes out like this and we'll say that the slot has a width of let's say six millimeters and then we'll say that the center to center on that slot is nine millimeters so this sketch for our split line is going to look something like this 11 millimeters six millimeters for the slot width, nine millimeters for the depth of that slot and then what we'll do is we'll say that we want to create what's called a split line and the split line command is found here features curves split line features curves split line features curves split line so it's here on our features toolbar features and then you come over here to curves split line and so we choose the split line command and then you choose the option over here for projected and then it says what face do you want to split well that'll just be this face here you just pick anywhere on this face here now 
Because our sketch consisted of multiple contours that are overlapping, the split line looks a little bit funky when we finish it. You'll see here that if you if you look at the split line, we ended up splitting this face and this face and this face. We ended up with a little bit too many faces there. We really just want that to be one single face. Well, one way we could resolve that would be by trimming the sketch here. We could have done a trim there and, and trimmed out that edge and trimmed this geometry here. But another way that we could do this is by using my favorite command and your favorite command, what is it? What command do you think we're using? Type it down below in the comments if you know what it is. That's right. Insert face delete the delete face command. Always a clutch command. Always there to help us out in these kinds of situations. So we could say we want to delete just this face here in the middle of that patch. And then we hit the green check mark. And yes, that is what we like. So if you love the delete face command, be sure to leave me a comment below. Be sure to hit the like button on this video. But there we go, we deleted that face. And so what that sets us up for is to create a forming tool and also create this cut in the forming tool all in one single command. So now what we need to do is tell SolidWorks that this is a forming tool and we need to tell SolidWorks where the forming tool should stop pressing into the model. And we need to tell SolidWorks what faces, if any, are going to be removed. You know, if we if we were just creating like a sheet metal dimple, just like a little um, a little bump area that comes up on the sheet metal, then we wouldn't have to have to select a face to remove. But in this case, we are trying to remove a face. We're trying to cut a face through. So the way that we get this part ready to be a sheet metal forming tool is we go here to sheet metal, and we go to the command forming tool, forming tool, and then SolidWorks says what face do you want to be the stopping face and we pick this face here and then solidworks says what faces do you want to remove and we pick this face here and then the final thing that solidworks asks for is the insertion point now by default this is this is dropped right here it's a point you can drag it away here but there's a point that's just dropped right here on the origin and that's going to work for us it's perfect for us it's right at the center of the forming tool and the center of this hole however there may be times when you want that that insertion point to be somewhere else and if that were the case then what you could do is you can drag that point around like maybe instead of this being at the center of this larger hole we want it at the center here since that's where the screw is going to end up once we mount this thing on the wall and have it slide down so maybe it would make more sense to have the insertion point there or maybe if the forming tool was like a louver it would make more sense for the the, the insertion point to be on the corner of the louver you know, whatever makes the most sense for you, that's where you can put the insertion point. But for this example, we're just going to drop it right here, right on the origin. So we hit the green check mark. And then SolidWorks does something kind of cool. It goes through and it changes the face color of our forming tool part. And the reason I say this is pretty cool is because in the old days, we had to do this manually and we had to know exactly what the correct colors were to get the forming tool to work. In the old days, it was a lot more difficult to create a forming tool. And if you ever go into the forming tool folder, so if you go in here to design library and then you go into the forming tool folder and you look at one of the older forming tools, like some of these older louvers here, if I go to open, you'll see that there's, there's some real um, interesting decisions that are made to create these forming tools. And uh, it is not exactly an easy process to go through and get these forming tools to work. It certainly was not in the old days. And that's why they look the way they do. They sometimes look very bizarre the way that they're constructed. And it was just different technology, different way of constructing forming tools. It just works a lot easier now in the modern versions of SolidWorks. So you can see SolidWorks went through and it, it created all the appropriate face colors. It lets us leave the dummy block behind. We don't have to remove the dummy block. And it lets us indicate uh, in, in the appropriate colors which faces are going to be removed almost through a wizard tool by using that form tool option. So now what we need to do is we need to save this model and then we need to add it to a folder. And then there's one final kind of magic step when we add this part to the folder, which I'll show you in just a moment. So first of all, let's save this part. So to keep things very simple here, I'm just gonna save this right into my C drive. I'm gonna make a new folder called 000 uh, Toby's Forming Tool. Okay, but you could call this folder whatever you want. You can place it wherever you want, but you wanna make sure that you're very comfortable browsing to and finding that folder. So I'm just gonna put this right in my C drive, 000 Toby's Forming Tool, and then we'll call this one uh, Keyhole Standoff. Keyhole Standoff. So we say save, and there we go. There is our forming tool for our sheet metal part. Now, what we can do is we can go over, go back, you can use control tab, control plus tab is how you get this 
uh, currently open documents window to show up. You can go back to this part that we made together at the beginning of this video. We can go back to this part here, and then we can go into our design library, design library, and we can choose this icon here. This is the icon to add a new file location. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna point to the folder that we just created, the folder where we saved our forming tool. So we click on this add file location, and I'm, in my case, I'm going to go to my C drive, and I've got a folder here in my C drive called 000 Toby's Forming Tool. So we'll go in there, and I'm going to say OK. So you're going to point to point to the folder that you just created. You don't have to select anything in here. You just pick the folder, and then you pick OK. And so we say OK. And so now what you'll see is that now that we've pointed to that folder here in your design library, you've got a second folder here called Toby's forming tool. So you got your design library and now you've got this new whole folder here. And look at that, there is your forming tool in that folder. So everything is good, right? Not quite, because you'll see if you drag this file here into your, your part, SolidWorks says, are you trying to make a derived part? No, uh, no, I'm not. So you say no, and then it just opens that part. It's like, no, that's not what I wanna do. I wanna add that part to my sheet metal part. So let me press control tab here. So in order to get this to work as a forming tool, we have to remember to click on this folder here, right mouse button on this folder and say, this is a forming tools folder. And once you do that, that triggers SolidWorks to understand, oh, okay. So when you drag and drop, what you're actually trying to do is push this through the sheet metal part. So we drag and drop this in here now, and now we are happy to see that when we hit the green check mark, SolidWorks is able to push that right through the sheet metal part. If we do it again, if you drag and drop this in, and then before you drop it, if you press tab, then what SolidWorks will do is it'll flip the direction of that sheet metal feature. So now you see this one is going in the upward direction instead of the downward direction. If you go to drag and drop that in again, You'll notice here that when I go to drag and drop it in, I can control the angle of the forming tool. So I can say I want that to be at 90 degrees, control the angle here. There's an option here for position. So with the position option, what you're able to do is click additional points and you can drop additional instances of this forming tool. Or you can take that original point and you can drag it around a little bit. So if I press control five, so we're looking at this thing from the top, then I could drag these into the appropriate positions so that they can all be formed. So that's the basics of how the forming tool command works. And once we're done with that position, you can see here, boom, we're able to drop in all those instances. So here you can see we can move this one around. So I hope that that all made sense to you. Um, I guess that the final thing that I might do with this video is I would go back to this model here where we kind of set ourselves up to use that forming tool. Usually what I would do in this spot is instead of positioning it in the um, original sketch or the sketch of the forming tool, I think sometimes it's easier just to create your positioning sketch as its own explicit sketch. This is more personal preference than advice, but this is how I would do it. I would create my uh, my geometry here to position those those key keyhole standoffs here in a separate sketch. So maybe I would make a sketch here um, like 160 by 360 something like that for those uh, standoffs. And uh, then what I would do is I would just exit that sketch, maybe you know change the color, maybe change the name of that sketch. So sketch color here, and that's gonna be my layout for keyholes. And then what I would do is I would go to my forming tool library. I would drag and drop this in here, press the tab key to make sure that it is going in the correct direction. Okay, and then let go, and then I would uh, adjust the angle here if I needed to. That's actually the angle I want it to be because I'm going to set this on the wall and then have it kind of slide down onto that keyhole. So then I would go to position, and then all I need to do is just pick this point, this point, this point, and then finally I could right mouse button select and take this original one and just drag and drop it onto that other corner there. And so we hit the green check mark, and boom, there we go. We can hide this layout sketch. And that thing is looking good. That's exactly what I was hoping for from that forming tool. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit the like button. Be sure to leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you learned from this video. Let me know if I missed anything. And if you like my style of teaching, be sure to take a look at the link down below for the upcoming sheet metal training class, all the information about the schedule for that class and how you can sign up for that class. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a lot about forming tools. I hope it's a little bit less of a mystery. And I hope that you will come back for the next Too Tall Toby Sheet Metal Quick Tip.